it's time for us to talk nutrition. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the issue of cholesterol. And I'm sure that's one of the, issue, the subjects that is very uh, concerning to a lot of us, uh, particularly in these times when, you know, activities are fewer, uh, sitting and being sedentary has become more, and so on and so forth. Akosia Kunedu Yadam, who is a state registered nutritionist, has joined us, um, and she's going to help us to delve into this issue. Akosia, good morning. Good morning, Kosia. How are you? I'm fine. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. It's good to see you. <laughs> Yeah, so um, take us into this whole issue of managing cholesterol. Um, earlier on, when we opened the show, we were talking with um, um, Jifa about the fact that you can be very slim mm -hmm. and um, not look like you have any weight issues, yeah. but still have cholesterol challenges. Of course. <laughs> How is this possible? And just take us into the whole... To start with, yeah. um, it is my profession. I know I'm supposed to know better. But I've been at borderline cholesterol before. Oh, wow. Yeah, so <clears throat> what you said is perfectly right. Um, it makes sense. You can't just look at me and say that everything is going on for her. Yeah. As far as how she looks yeah. uh, is concerned, and so she should be perfect. Mm. I have had that issue wow. of cholesterol. Though I didn't fall into it, but I've been at borderline. borderline. And as I talk to you, I plan going for a second test mm. just to know because it presents no signs. So yeah. cholesterol... When there are cholesterol, bad cholesterol in the system, now there is a limit as far as blood flow is concerned. That is why most people will find um, themselves having stroke. Okay. So, yes, hypercholesterolemia or hyperlipidemia has yeah. to do with a, a distortion as far as um, the level of cholesterol you need. So you realize that I can't just look at you and say that, mm. okay, Akusia, nobody looked at me and said that I, I think you are borderline yeah. for um, hypercholesterolemia or hyperlipidemia. Mm. Mm. So there are laps um, you, you, to be done, and then the results will let us know where you fall. Okay. So we have total cholesterol level. I'll quickly run through that. It's here. Depending on where you do it, Lancet will have a different interpretation. We have various labs. So based on where you do it, they will give you the cut. But um, for the purpose of this presentation, the total cholesterol level has to be less than 200. And then borderline is anything 200 to 239. Okay. And then anything beyond 239. And those ones, once blood samples are drawn, are drawn or we draw blood samples at the laboratory and go through the process, then the findings will reveal to us if I am still at borderline or I've been able to do something about it. Okay. And we have LDL cholesterol, that is the bad cholesterol. So cholesterol is not necessarily a bad thing. The body produces um, cholesterol on its own. Mm. Yes, and so there are people who go like, oh, but after eating kenke and banku, yeah. and I expect that there should be some amount of cholesterol. So the body, naturally, there's something called good cholesterol, that is the HDL, okay. and then we have the LDL, but for the purposes of this presentation and the fact that we are focusing on the non-communicable diseases as far as cardiovascular diseases are concerned, heart, um, yes, um, strokes are concerned, definitely we are paying much attention to the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. And then we have the HDL. It's, it's really not, 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 it, it doesn't happen that something that is a natural thing within you will be beyond a certain limit. So mm. with much of uh, or most of the labs, you find okay. out that they are focusing on the LDL, the triglycerides, and the total cholesterol. So for your triglycerides, yes, that has to also be less than, that is desirable, it should be less than 200, and then borderline 200 to 399, and anything beyond 300 or so, let's say 400, is something we will say that, okay, you are becoming highly susceptible to cardiovascular diseases. Mm. Yeah. All right. So um, I, I assume that from from all that you've said, yeah. that there are things that we eat mm. that will push us towards having um, higher levels of bad cholesterol or, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, what are some of the foods that can cause cholesterol? OK, so basically it's a lifestyle habit. And then you working out to set you right or decrease your risk of having um, elevated levels as far as your triglycerides or your LDL cholesterol level is, is concerned or are concerned. So we, I, I put together 13 foods that will help as far as improving on your um, uh, cholesterol 
is concerned. Most importantly, we've spoken extensively about the four-star diet. I will talk about it. If you are eating and having this protocol in mind and you are conscious about you satisfying the four protocols, then it will set you right because some of the foods you are going to talk about falls within the, the four-star diet. And we are blessed as a country with a lot of... Um, yeah. um, so this is the four-star diet. We have the animal flesh and protein. We have the fruits and vegetables. We have the staples. We have the legumes. But because we want to focus on cholesterol and the fact that we want to reduce our bad cholesterol um, level yeah. and limit our risk of having cardiovascular diseases, we want to focus on low-fat foods. Okay. So we have an um, example of low-fat foods. Um, um, we have avocado. Avocado is excellent. We have fish. We have uh, uh, vegetables. We have poultry. So it takes into account the Mediterranean diet kind of uh, approach mm. as far as you dealing with um, hypercholesterolemia or hyperlipidemia is concerned. So for persons who have hyperlipidemia um, already, you can look at this as your guide to staying fit as far as what you put in is concerned. So you should be mindful as far as your workout, you working out is concerned. 30 to 45 minutes a day should be okay, ideally for you. You mean like aerobics? Yes. Okay. Well, you should do cardio, but I always want you to go to a, a fitness center with a gym instructor or a professional to guide you through because I may be having elevated levels as far as my cholesterol is concerned, but I have a healthy BMI and all other things are okay. I don't want to lose weight because mm -hmm. I have lost 4 kg. I didn't go there to lose weight. So okay. it means that I wasn't helped as far as a professional is concerned. So go to a registered fitness center, talk to the professional, explain whatever you are there for. If it's something that has to do with hypercholesterolemia, definitely um, cardio should come in and then you should be guided on what is best for you, what is not best for you. Yeah. And if you are overweight or obese, definitely some of the workout plans that will be designed for you or developed for you might be different from me because I just want to make sure that I am fit and I am, I am just focusing on my cholesterol levels yeah. and the fact that I need to take care of that and not to lose weight okay. or to achieve a certain weight. So the Mediterranean diet is a guide and for after workout you find yourself um, going to the second portion where the second side where you have fruits and vegetables and whole meal foods greatly also sits in there mm. followed by seafoods before you come to poultry and then the apex is um, alcohol, wine, um, fat, cheese, what, what have you. Okay. I won't sit here and, and take alcohol out because some people are taking it. And I've given the right dosages. I don't want to focus much on, uh, on that. But if you have hypercholesterolemia, if you've been at borderline, this is something to guide you as far as what you are eating is concerned. And also concerning what you eat, I want to now break it down. As far as um, certain foods, the 13 foods I spoke about yeah. are concerned. So you can have um, the legumes or pulses, they are heart friendly foods and they are plant source protein. So it means that once it's um, heart healthy or heart friendly foods, yeah. a heart healthy food, it means that it will influence on your heart in a positive sense. There are foods like avocado, which helps as far as um, reg uh, regulating the, the activity of the heart, as far as your blood pressure is concerned. So fatty fish, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, uh, fruits and berries. We have um, chocolate, dark chocolate. Chocolate contains flavonoids. They are very good. Okay. And most of the fruits and vegetables contains antioxidants, anti-inflammatory mm. properties. And so definitely most of these foods, a, a lot of examples, so foods, tea, dark leafy green vegetable, olive oils, they are all examples of foods that are rich as far as the right nutrients are concerned. Example of wholemeal food, which is common here, we have oats, we have barley, we have wheat. It contains beta glucan and it helps as far as regulating how much cholesterol, uh, uh, let's say how much bad cholesterol can, 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 can play a bad, um, let's say a negative impact effect, yeah. effect on your mm. health. And so mm. once you have something that is influencing your LDL, your triglyceride level in a positive sense, then it means that it makes the work of the good cholesterol easier. Mm. So incorporating some of these foods we've mentioned into your daily meals, you eating fresh fruits, a lot of fruits and vegetables, a lot of the dark leafy green vegetables will serve you with antioxidant properties, lutein, it will serve you with the 
beta glucan, like I spoke about, carotenoids, yeah. and a whole lot of wonderful um, 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 amino um, acids or a, a whole lot of um, nutrients that will serve um, um, your heart some goodness as far as heart health mm -hmm. is concerned. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to talk about the the role of supplements in all of this. But mm. before we do that, I just ask also that are there some people who are genetically predisposed? Of course. To to become to having more bad cholesterol. Of course. So just so in Ghana's it. recent case, as far as um, cardiovascular diseases or cholesterol is mm. concerned, stands between 17 to 23 percent. Oh, I see. Yes. So it means that gradually it is, it is kind of, it's here to stay. If you don't, it's about each one for himself, God for us all, just okay. like the, the, the lifting of certain restrictions now. <laughs> it's like you and your God. So that is where we stand as far as the global picture of cholesterol is concerned as a country. So it means that there is a need to really pay much attention to it about genetics. Yes, if I have a family history, of hypercholesterolemia or any even non-communicable disease, it predisposes me mm. to being at risk as far as this is concerned. So for people or persons who are so aware of it, I had a client last Friday, she Saturday, she was so shocked that she had diabetes. But I was like, do you have a family issue? She was <laughs> like, none that I'm aware of. She sat in front of me, we looked the same, we had the same BMI, yeah. everything was working perfectly for wow. her. So it didn't make sense to her as to why she would have a, FBF of 17.5, 17 mm, that mm. was extremely high. I was like, do you feel comfortable? So yes, there are family um, 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 reasons or genetics It comes to play. You can't take it out. Yeah. Um, all right, so t talk to us about the, the role of supplements. Okay, so um, supplements are not medications. And when we say supplements, it's supposed to help or kind of add on to something it's not supposed to replace so that is why i even go um I'm approved sometimes it's not in all cases mm -hmm. for instance i meet a client you just were diagnosed obviously i can give myself some time if i am treating you do you get it cuckoo so it becomes a, a, a need to where you feel that it has to be done. I, I don't want to mention age so that people will just get up and go to, to any pharmacy or supplement yeah. shop and start buying it. So various reasons will make me be able to give you supplements. So I won't sit here and say that you rule it out completely because trust me, I have given some to some patients mm. or clients and it is working perfectly. For because them. sometimes, yeah. yes, you need to substitute. And for some people, for, for instance, a lady I spoke to you about, this is somebody who just had an episode of it and and she is at 17 when people are being kept and given insulin even for the fact that they are closer to 10 mm. or a little beyond 10 mm. so i was like are you comfortable because i've had yeah. a client like that she was acting like somebody who had high fever with oh, that wow. figure yes I so see. i was shocked to see a calm lady seated and I was like, do we need to seek a and second yeah, the opinion? Because the levels like were mm. extremely high. Mm. So it is very important that we all pay attention to it. I'm going to get mine. You should get yours. Everybody mm. watching should mm. do this to know if they are safe. Yeah. I, talking about getting checked and all that. Um, so this weekend I did something. Mm. Uh, I went to look at the BMI chart. <laughs> okay. I looked at my height. Mm -hmm. Then I checked with my weight mm. and the BMI, it says that between what, 18.5 18, 18 or so and 24. 0.9, so let's say let's say 18 to 25, yeah. anything within, within that, that is a normal or healthy normal BMI. healthy BMI. But I realized that I was about 25.9 or something. Congratulations, you're which, overweight. <laughs> which means that I am, by the BMI, I'm actually overweight. Now, when I checked the specifics, I realized that the only way for me to drop yep. to like 24, where I will feel like I'm in a safe zone, is to lose 10 kilos. Mm. You know, and I thought to myself, wow. That's too much. But that's, no, but that's what Ideally. it is. Ideally. Do you see? That's what it is. I mean, it's the reality. I mean, numbers don't lie. So for your outlook, Bakweku, let me, let me come in now. Mm. BMI alone it's is not, not what we okay, use good. to make Just diagnosis. Now I do, for me, mm. if I consult, there are, there are measurements that will help us to know your total body fat. So for now, me, if I'm consulting, I want to know your total body fat. Because okay. see how Jifa is naturally built. Mm. See how I am built. Yeah. 
So we are built differently. So we are built differently. Okay. And for even a man and a woman, definitely our, our, our physique, our appearance mm. can be different. So now I do um, body fat composition or what we call body composition just to know the total amount of fat, to know the bad to know what we need to work on. So mm. now there are various things. And for me, I do waist to hip circumference too. As I've well. spoken about it. Yeah. And then I do waist to, to hip circumference. Mm. So I do waist to height. I do waist to hip. I do BMI. Mm. And then I do body composition as far as your total uh, fat content is concerned. There are people putting on weight because there is much water in them. There are people putting on weight because there is much added fat in them. Okay. So now BMI alone... It's, 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 not not just, it's not enough. It's not okay. enough. So talking about the waist to hip yep. ratio, yep. what should it be? And if the if it's flipped the other way around, how dangerous is it? It's very uh, it's very tricky and quite technical. We've spoken about it. This is the third time I have done that presentation on my social media pages, but I'll go through it for a woman. As far as your waist to hip, you are not supposed to go beyond one or 0 0.9 for the waist to hip or waist to um, so height. So means your waist must so, be less yes, so, than your hip. So you realize that for people, the pot belly men or guys, if you measure ideally, that is the clue or the guide. Two measurements should be equal to your height. So you measure as far as the waist, your, your waist circumference, and you double it. Then you double it. It's supposed to be your height, but okay. obviously, um, looking at a man like, excuse me, but I, I Mr. Avle, definitely his waist times two will be. His height is way, he's way taller. Okay. And so it's just a clue to help us. You realize that the pot belly people, it could be so big so that when you measure, you, you don't even get up to the height of that person. And it's the same for the women. So the women is supposed to be 0 0.9. So, so there's no way that your waist should be the same as your height. No, no, <laughs> twice of that should ideally be like your height. Okay. Yes. So what if, what if oh, your waist well, who, is the same as your height? I've, I've not seen one in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to, maybe in the US, but I've, I've not seen one in maybe somewhere South Africa in, in the United States yes that's but a very Ghana, large person. They, yes that's that there are people who can't move they are mm. morbidly obese in fact they've crossed 40 some some have have they've broken the record so mm. yes for those people sometimes you just have to carry them there was this um, wow. program I used to follow they were just helping bigger people so basically mm. if you are like that if I have to check my cholesterol levels then it means that if you don't look like me or are bigger than me, then mm. it means that if you think your body is storing a lot of fat, you need to pay attention to your cholesterol. Okay. Before we go, yep. just let's talk about, I mean, people are watching and thinking, okay, so um, we've talked about healthy foods to eat and, you know, and then supplements to take and so on. What are the things to avoid at all costs? What should you avoid if you don't want bad cholesterol? Okay, so there are foods that are bad for the heart. We have examples to show butter, cheese, the carbonated drinks. We've spoken extensively about here. I'm almost tempted to always mention names, but I'll give you the clue. <laughs> if you open it and you hear the ch okay. sound, Okay. I, I think you, you get us. It's Talk not you good. Bob, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sound, it means it's carbonated. That means that we have extra or other sugar preservatives and other things. That worries even children. It worries everybody within the life cycle. So a lot of sugar will pump glucose directly into your system. Mm. And I said that some stay in the bloodstreams, others are converted into fat. They begin to line the passageway of, of, of blood or the blood vessels. And even speaking, as far as the introduction of this conversation is concerned, there is a limited block as far as mm. flow of blood is concerned. That is why people will get stroke because it means that the supply of blood to the brain is somehow cutting away. Mm. So whatever will prevent the free flow of blood yeah. yes, can contribute to that. So you should make sure that you are eating healthy foods. We have um, various foods to show. Let me just read from here. We have um, carbonated drinks like I, I spoke about. We have um, fatty meat and I will encourage you not to do the, the, the fatty part, do the lean part. The most healthiest part of the chicken, or, or yes, is the breast area. You realize okay. that there is almost zero fat at the, at so, the breast area. So, so let me just clarify this. So you're saying that even for 
even for meats that are known to be healthy meats, yeah. right, like chicken and yeah, there and, are parts and white meats and so there are still parts that are healthier than yes. others. Yes. So if, okay. if if you are somebody at borderline, mm. if you are somebody already with a condition, then you need to really take the, the drastic measures because okay. borderline means I can easily fall into it. Mm. And already I'm beginning to feel a certain way. And the tricky thing here is that they present no signs or symptoms. Mm. So people just suffer heart attack. Look at what happened to our own commoner, um, um, uh, uh, Dumo, yeah, the, 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 the journalist. Yeah, mm. so it, 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 it will tell you nothing, Kweku, I am coming. You, you will see nothing. It's not like malaria where you can have signs and symptoms to let you know that you have this condition. It can just happen. So you need to really go through the lab. That's the only way out. We have a margarine. There are healthier alternatives. We have a microwave popcorn, the popcorn lovers. We have butter. We have hamburgers. So basically the fast foods. The yeah. fast foods are not heart healthy meals. They influence on your cholesterol in a bad way. Yeah. And so the, the healthiest thing to do is to stay through to our fresh foods. Before um, some of these restaurants, I'm tempted to mention names, came in, <laughs> who weren't having some of these conditions. Okay. Fries and, and then the breaded chicken. There's okay. a reason why they give you the, that chicken and fries and add coke to it. That is really poisonous. That's, they should stop it. You're just <laughs> loading up on danger. That is, they are, they are helping you to buy hypercholesterolemia. Oh, no. All right. So how do people reach you? How do people find you? Okay, so on Instagram at The Nutritionist Akosia. Mm -hmm. On Instagram at The Nutritionist Akosia. LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Nutritionist Akosia. And then you can reach me on 0243-350206. All right. Well, we've been talking managing your cholesterol levels, things to do and not to do. Get in touch with Akosia. She'll help you if you have a personal challenge in this area. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe. Like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.